freedom is the lack of desire to control others and the strong desire to do what you want and pursue your own happiness. Okay. So as I've covered in a lot of other videos and articles, plans, movements, social combat are ineffective. Trying to change others is ineffective for the most part, unless you have billions of dollars and a lot of guns. And even then it makes you remain enslaved to them. Um, with power comes responsibility. You are responsible for the people when you have power over them. And your day and night is going to be devoted to that particular cause. And there will be a ton of setbacks and a ton of problems. And as I've said in my other videos, even then the system of governance that we had doesn't, I mean, we haven't seen a large society that's, that's highly functional since the invention of agriculture because it's it's extremely difficult for these large societies to work and it's just not the path that I recommend okay if you want to get into politics and try and change the world plenty of other sites with guys getting angry and frustrated with the way that things are and talking about the great change that they're gonna make so I suggest that you watch those and watch those videos now there's two reasons that people remain enslaved when they try and change others okay they don't realize that there's a multitude of options for being free, which there are, especially in um, today's world. You have more options than our ancestor could have ever dreamed. And with the technological revolution, that is the internet that's only going to vastly increase over time. And number two is they accept um, that they won't challenge the, that they accept without challenging the assumptions that restrict their freedom. Okay. They don't challenge the assumptions, well, I can't do this because of X. They don't just say, well, could I do that? You know, do I have to have this house? Do I have to get married? Uh, they just say, well, this is what I have to do, okay? If you've worked in the corporate world, you will learn and you will listen to grown men, men in their 30s, 40s, 50s, talk about what they have to do. And their, the vast majority of their life is what they believe they have to do. When in reality, they just haven't questioned the assumptions uh, behind that, okay? So this is what Harry Brown calls assumption traps, and that's going to be the bulk of this video, is breaking down all these assumption traps that you have a multitude of options from, number one, and being able to question them and see if these assumption traps are working for you. And in most cases, they're, they're going to be not working for you. So the number one... Uh, the first assumption trap that we're going to cover is identity trap. This is the identity trap number one. Okay, and basically Harry Brown defines that as um, living society's expectations. Okay, you have the belief that you should be someone other than yourself. Okay, I am a good, responsible member of the community. Okay, if you've if you've read my article, how to murder your middle class mentality. I basically decimate that entire idea of this. You have to be this sort of um, khaki pants wearing, good, respectable member of your community, family man, uh, church once a week, bake sales, PTA meetings, this kind of a guy. When in reality, you might just want to not do any of that stuff, right? You might just want to have fun with girls and enjoy your life and focus really hard on your business, okay? Now, maybe you do want to do that stuff. Uh, but it is the important thing is that you're not trying to be somebody else. You are not trying to be this identity that you've been sold through advertising and that your parents and, uh, you know, people who aren't you are trying to make you conform to. OK, instead, freedom is doing things your own way and being the person that you want to be. All right. Good example is a uh, gay man who lived their entire lives in the closet and get married and have kids. And then sometimes you see these guys come out of the closet in their fifties or sixties. Well, it's like, you know, at this day and age, whatever you are, you've got to, the sooner you start being yourself, the sooner you're going to be happy because you can't be happy living a lie. All right. And if you're living a lie, then that means you're living for others and you're living to avoid shame. And it is a guaranteed, guaranteed that you will not be happy. Okay. It is, a, it is a guarantee that you will not be happy, all right? So that's identity trap number one. Identity trap number two is the assumptions that others will do things the way you would. Of all the traps in the book and of the list, this is the one that still triggers me sometimes, but I've done a lot of work on that, 
it is the case of when you're looking around and you see someone doing something stupid, like you do almost every day, especially if you're, um, you have to drive to work or whatever, you think, why the fuck would you do that? That's, that's my instant go-to. Why the fuck? Why would he do that? Why would you turn there? Like, no retard. Why would you do that? Right? <laughs> like, why? What the fuck is wrong with you? However, people don't do the way things the way that you do. People do dumb, retarded shit all the time. All the time. You can't control them. You can just control how you deal with them. So if I'm sitting there in traffic and I'm getting upset for five, ten minutes, that's on me. That's not on the other guy. Because I let him, I let his dumb shit affect my state. Okay? When in reality, I should know, I should be prepared going into traffic that people are going to do dumb shit. And when I see the guy do a U-turn into oncoming traffic, I say, of course he does. That's, that's what I expected to happen. Okay? That extends well beyond traffic to almost any of your area of your life where you are having a recurring problem, being upset with people. You should, that means you haven't managed your expectations properly. Okay? You should know that they're going to be doing something stupid, whether it's at work or wherever. So, you, you can't control what they do, but you can control with how you deal with them. You give up control, okay, of that when you try and control others. So, you give up control of how you can deal with them and how you can reframe yourself when you try and control them. So, the smart move is not to try and control the other person, okay? Not to try and control the other person. Smart move is to choose freedom over power, all right? And that's me being out here and not being a sales manager back in Toronto trying to whip people and control them and make sure that they do their sales calls right and all kinds of other unfun things. And it's a large part of why I don't um, have employees for my business. I don't even have a VA or uh, I, don't, I try and contract as little as possible because I know that it's most likely not going to be done to the standard that I want it to do. All right. In the future... I might choose to have uh, a contractor, but what I would choose to do, okay, in the terms of how I can control the situation is I'd rather have one guy pay him a lot of money and then have him subcontract out all the other problems. Basically, I just talk to one very smart, very capable guy, and then he handles all the problems for me, and whether he, if he wants to subcontract that out, I don't care, just as long as it gets done, and I know that, that that's the way that I would have the least possible headaches, okay? The... Number one problem in business, 90% of business stress as a business owner comes from having employees. Okay, The more you try and take on responsibility and control people, the more stress you're going to have because people always fuck things up. And if you're a high IQ, self-starter, autodidact, and the biggest mistake you can make is thinking that other people are going to be high IQ, self-starter, autodidacts because they're not. They're not like that whatsoever and you just have to accept that reality and you have to think, well... Am I really that smart if I keep letting other people upset me and I keep trying to control other people? The answer is no. The smart thing to do is to control what you can control, control and not try and control other people. Just control with how you deal with them, right? If you have negative people in your life who are constantly fucking up your life, then you just get rid of them and try, instead of trying to control them. You focus on you know, what the best, uh, most applicable solution is to that problem, right? So that's identity trap number two. Next trap is the intellectual trap, okay? This is the belief in the emotions you should have instead of the emotions you do have. If you are a high IQ intellectual guy, you might convince yourself that you are logical and rational, okay? This is what I covered in my last video of how to understand yourself in part one, that you are actually a very emotional being and that your logic and um, reason serves your emotions, okay? You have all kinds of emotions that uh, that you might not think you should have, okay? Someone pisses you off, you might think instantly to punch them in the face. And, however, you might think I'm logical, rational, I shouldn't have that emotion. Or you might think I'm a Christian, I shouldn't have that emotion. But the reality is you do have that emotion, okay? You do have that emotion. In reality, you're, you're not logical. In reality, your logic serves your emotions and you're always trying to get a good feeling at all possible times. And when someone cuts you off from a good feeling, perhaps they hurt your self-esteem, 
um, which makes you feel bad about yourself, then you are going to have uh, a reaction to that. But the smarter thing you can do is accept what emotions you actually have and try to instead of trying to pretend that you're an intellectual and, and above these type of emotions, you have to understand where your emotions are so that you can control them and so that you're able to reframe to a positive emotion. And the best way to do that is mindfulness training, okay? And you can do meditation if you want. I do meditation, um, you know, probably every other day around the afternoon, around 3 p.m. I just lie down on my bed, take my shirt off, put the air conditioning on, close my eyes, and just watch my thoughts. And that lasts half an hour, my life lasts an hour, and it really calms me down. And it's just an awesome way to relax. It's kind of like having a nap without um, going to sleep and then feeling groggy afterwards. 